in compliance with the decision of the second meeting that had taken place in Bratislava in May 2012, the International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers held the Mission for Peace and Friendship Humanitarian Action and the third meeting in Kazakhstan's capital of Astana from the 16th to the 17th of July 2013. A wreath-laying ceremony to the Atanana Monument, which stands for Motherland, marked the beginning of the Mission for Peace and Friendship Humanitarian Action. The action participants paid tribute to memories of heroes who had sacrificed their lives in the name of freedom and independence of their fatherland. The Kazakhstan Defense Ministry leadership, the Republic's Majlis deputies, heads of a number of federal agencies, representatives of ministries and agencies, veteran, youth and public organizations of the country took part in the forum to make it particularly important. Guests and participants of the action were given a heartfelt and friendly welcome at Astana's Peace and Consent Palace. On behalf of the host country, Kazakhstan Defense Minister Edelbek Jaksebekov addressed all those present. Esteemed forum participants, generals and officers, we are pleased to welcome you in Kazakhstan's capital of Astana at the third meeting of the International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers. Over a short term of two years, the International Committee made good work on the issues of mutual support rendered to the Armed Forces Veteran Organizations of the CIS, European and the Middle East countries. The number of states involved is steadily increasing, which proves the organization's significance. The establishment of necessary conditions for a constructive dialogue on the issues of peace and security in the region and the world is one of important fields of the state policies of our sovereign state of Kazakhstan. And we are especially glad that the International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers is a foundation for an expert dialogue on various issues for the sake of peace. Young guys and silver-haired veterans of the Republic of Kazakhstan are seen here today. I can see here a lot of brothers in arms who I served with in different units and formations of the Soviet Union Armed Forces. Above all, I would like to express my gratitude to warriors, veterans and the young generation of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Thank you for being a peace stronghold in the region of Asia. Well done. Thank you for this. National Advisory Committee of Organization of Reserve Officers and the World Veteran Federation, we have similar object objectives. We share a common stand on several matters, especially on matters related to the well-being of veterans and the international, uh, international peace and uh, security. During the meeting, President of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, was decorated with the International Advisory Committee's Most Honorable Knighthood Order for a special contribution made to support veteran organizations, veterans and families of the military. Alexander Kanchin, I would like to show the order. And on our behalf, I am asking the Defense Minister to take and hand over the International Veteran Movement's Distinguished Report to Mr. President. The host site held a magnificent festive concert performed by Kazakhstan's best artists. Outstanding professional skills of the performers were highly appreciated by the guests and participants of the action during the concert and ceremonial reception. Prospects for further cooperation, 
and the International Advisory Committee's activities expansion were discussed at the third meeting, which was held on July 17, 2013. The meeting reports and speeches stressed that to counteract nowadays challenges and threats, consolidation of efforts and strengthening of friendship, cooperation and mutual assistance based on spiritual solidarity of reserve officers, irrespective of bloc identities, social and economic status and confession are of great significance. We exchange experience and address heads of states, governments, political, governmental and public figures from various countries. The participants of the meeting unanimously believe that over three years the International Advisory Committee gained authority both at the international level and within the participating countries. We put into practice different activities. We are capable of doing a lot all together, namely serious and fruitful projects. Over the time, we managed to draw up common approaches and define ways of development based on experience gained during joint activities through public diplomacy methods. Dan Rebach, chairman of the Association of Soldiers of the Polish Armed Forces. We find it interesting how other organizations carry the work we are doing, how they touch upon urgent issues for the benefit of members of our organizations and their families. The Russian delegation statement on the preparation and invitation to participate in the International Business Congress on Personal, Social and State Security and Protection to be held in October 2013 in Moscow was taken by the meeting participants with a business-like interest. Over 50 states are expected to take part in the Congress. The organization and carrying out of the personal, social and state security and protection business congress will mark a milestone in social life. It's a good step for the International Advisory Committee to make its contribution to the magnificent project. And your skills will make a good deal for the younger generation, our children and grandchildren. New members acceded to the organization. The Union of Generals and Surgeons of Reserve, the Republic of Bulgaria. The Zahal Veterans Organization, Israel. The Zavet Israel Defense Forces Veterans Association. The Association of Veterans and Reservists of Defense and Security of the Republic of Macedonia, the Republic of Macedonia. The Veteran Organization of the Serbian Republic, the Republic of Serbia. The Society of Military Pensioners of Montenegro, the Republic of Montenegro. The following observers were given the status of full-fledged members of the committee. The Hungarian Union of Associations of the Military, Hungary. The Union of the Military of the Polish Armed Forces, the Republic of Poland. The Club of Generals and Admirals of Serbia, the Republic of Serbia. The Soldiers Against War, the Czech Republic. Due to rearrangements in Kazakhstan's veteran organization system, the Armed Forces Veterans Republican Public Association became part of the International Advisory Committee. The geography of the committee's activities is expanding through the growth in number of its participants. Today, 10 new organizations from 9 countries became members of the committee, and the South Eastern Europe Council has been set up. It's good, as traditionally the Balkan states have been playing an important role both in Europe and in the whole world. A decision to establish the Regional Council of Organizations of States of the Southeastern Europe, headquartered in Belgrade, was taken. Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Club of Generals and Admirals of the Serbian Republic, Vidoje Pantelic, was elected Chairman of the Council and Vice President of the International Executive Committee. We are grateful to the IAC's Presidium for headquartering the South Eastern Europe Council in Belgrade and will do our best to make a huge contribution to implement tasks facing the International Advisory Committee. Reserve officers' organizations from a number of countries of the North and South America 
Africa, Central and Southeastern Asia are planned to be invited for prospective cooperation. The world is still witnessing horrors of war. We are confident to state that the war has no winners, as wounds and similar activities always remind us that war is not the best means to resolve conflicts and problems. For a considerable contribution to the establishment and operation of the committee, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Slovak Republic to the Russian Federation, Joseph Migish, and Deputy Chairman of the Union of Generals of Kazakhstan, Ait Kalisin Gulov, were elected Honorary Vice Presidents of the committee. Life is changing along with us, and when we met in Bratislava, there were 25 countries from NATO, Europe and Central Europe. Nowadays, there are more than 30 states. I would like to express my special gratitude to the Founding Fathers of such an organization of reserve officers as the International Advisory Committee. Your organizational activities made it possible to bring together a whole community of wise and experienced veterans and help them work in the name of peace and humane relations. In conclusion of the Astana meeting, participants shape prospects for further expansion of format and geography of the IAC and adopted the final document, the Declaration of the Mission for Peace and Friendship, International Humanitarian Action and the third meeting of the International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers. The declaration also addresses to heads of states. An exchange of memorable medals and insignia among the participants of the event was held. The meeting participants observed a minute of silent prayer to commemorate the recently deceased activists of the committee. First Deputy Chairman of the Organization of Veterans of War, Labor, Armed Forces and Law Enforcement Agencies of the Kyrgyz Republic, Karavay Asanaliev, was a pioneer and an active member of the committee's activities. The Astana meeting participants voiced confidence that the third meeting of the International Advisory Committee became an important step forward to develop the international movement. Similar humanitarian actions with the participation of reserve officers, reservists and veterans from different states play an important role in building confidence among peoples, bringing up the younger generation in the spirit of tolerance, friendship and mutual respect. It was a great pleasure for us to meet all the representatives of different countries. I believe it is one of the primary missions of the conference where we are given an opportunity to talk with one another and exchange views for the benefit of mankind and to create the world of security on the entire planet. A number of heads of the International Advisory Council's member organizations expressed willingness to hold the fourth regular meeting in their capital. After considering all the proposals, the committee's secretariat will agree upon the terms and place for the next regular meeting to be held.